this Friday's edition of the ABS Evening News. Prime Minister challenges the United Nations to reform and lays down the gauntlet to the world's rich and powerful nations. Leroy King released from police custody. His lawyer succeeds with 11th hour maneuvers to block his extradition. If there's any extradition under these circumstances, it is completely illegal and, and contrary to the rule of law. Four years in a row, Antigua and Barbuda again voted the Caribbean's most romantic destination. Restoration work on the St. John's Anglican Cathedral continues. I'm Sherilyn Beza and I'll tell you what remains to be done to complete this magnificent historical edifice and how you can assist. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico. Local Agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. It is Friday night. Welcome to the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's News Authority. I am Terry Andrew. And I am Alejandra Robinson. A special welcome to our viewers joining us via our website and on Facebook Live for the national segment of the news and sports. We're leading us off here this evening. Prime Minister, the Honorable Gaston Brown, wants a fundamental change in the way the United Nations operates. He is also challenging the world's most powerful nations to desist from operating on the basis that might is right. The nation's leader was addressing the United Nations General Assembly in New York today. Garfield Burford joins us with a recap of his comments. Garfield. Very good evening to you, Terry. Good evening to you, Alejandra. And good evening to our viewers right across the world. This was the moment when Prime Minister Donald Gaston Brown took to the stage at the UN General Assembly to address the gathering. Take a look. urgency and resoluteness in his tone in that presentation. He said the peoples of the world see the United Nations General Assembly as a talk shop where much is said and little is done to change their lives for the better. He pointed to the challenges that exist across various sections of the world. For example, the promise to turn swords into plowshares has sadly not materialized for millions around the world. But the Prime Minister explained why it was important for him to journey to the UN to make his presentation. And at least in this forum, I can raise my voice for the disadvantaged and dispossessed, including my own people in Antigua and Barbuda. History has taught us that no nation should believe that its individual oasis of wealth, prosperity, and advantage can continue to exist and expand if the rest of the globe is a wasteland. Minister therefore made a clarion call for a return to the principles of multilateralism where all countries play by the rules of the global international order. He called for collective action and that's when he insisted there must be urgent revitalization of the UN General Assembly. Take a look. For instance, without the inclusion of all member states of the United Nations in the discussions of global financial reforms, there can be no real comprehension of the grave vulnerability of small states to external shocks, high levels of poverty, and high debt to GDP ratios. A few privileged nations are making decisions that impact the livelihood of billions. The exclusive clubs of the G7 and the G20 cannot repair the fragmented international financial system without taking full account of the circumstances and views of the majority of the world's nations. Now, the Prime Minister's message was clear. Right must not take precedence over, uh, or might must never take precedence over right. And there must be renewed commitment to collective action and a rejection of trade wars. It was also a point made by French President Emmanuel Macron when he spoke at the UN General Assembly. And instead of walking away from the World Trade Organization, as the US under President Donald Trump has warned, Prime Minister Brown wants all of the countries around the world to make the system work and honor their commitments. And talking about commitments, it was at that point the Prime Minister mentioned the long outstanding payment from the United States to Antigua and Barbuda following a ruling by the World Trade Organization, WTO. After 15 years of winning an arbitration at the WTO, my little country is still awaiting an acceptable settlement by the United States to honor its obligation to us. That's right, 15 years later, we're still waiting. The U.S. economy is 20,000 times larger than Antigua and Barbuda's. Compensation for the injury to my small country is less than 0.008% of one year of the U.S.'s GDP. 
The injury that was done to my country's economy now amounts to over 20% of its GDP. No country can easily absorb that severe blow, which hurts our economy, sets back our infrastructural development, and constrains the provision of employment and advances in health and education. Now the Prime Minister says he's proud of the resilience of the people of Antigua and Barbuda to withstand this threat, but this need not to have happened. He says this country will not relent and will continue to push for justice on this matter of the WTO award from the uh, U.S. About 250 million U.S. dollars is owed to this country based on that WTO award. And the Prime Minister says the struggle for that will continue until justice is done and there will be no relenting on this matter. We'll certainly be having much more from the Prime Minister's presentation in subsequent newscasts, especially his comments on climate change and what the rich and powerful nations of the world need to do on that score. Back over to you, Terry and Alejandro. All right, thanks, Garfield. We, we, we can remember the last time the Honorable Gaston Gowan spoke uh, to the, the United Nations. He was met with tears here at uh, the VC Bird International April 20 when, when return. he returned. Yes. This time, I'm sure he probably be met with applause uh, from uh, people yeah, when he returned there. Today. All right, on we go here. In another of, of our top stories tonight, High Court Judge Justice Ian Morley has ordered the release of Leo, Leroy King, whom authorities were attempting to extradite to the U.S., to face criminal charges. Uh, King, the former head of the Financial Services Regulatory Commission, has been named by U.S. authorities as a co-conspirator in Alan Stanford's multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme. Jamie Jarache has details of today's court proceedings. United States authorities have been attempting to extradite King since he was named as an alleged co-conspirator in the Ponzi scheme nine years ago. The Court of Appeal this month dismissed King's latest appeal in judicial review proceedings brought to challenge the extradition. Considering this decision, authorities were seeking to have King extradited to the U.S. Friday morning. King's attorney, Dr. David Dorsett, says he moved speedily to stop the proceedings. Our argument today is basically an argument based on Section 15, 7, and 8 of the Extradition Act 1993. The Act basically says that once judicial review proceedings are in train or are pending that a person who has been requested of a foreign state shall not be extradited. Justice Morley agreed King was protected under this section of the act since there was still the possibility for him to appeal to the Privy Council. The government was represented by Director of Public Prosecutions Anthony Armstrong. One of the points raised by the DPP was that the appeal to the Privy Council is likely to fail. I think the judge was quite correct in saying that is not a matter for him to determine, that is a matter for other courts to determine. In November, the Court of Appeal will hear the argument to decide whether leave should be granted for the matter to be heard by the Privy Council. As he left the court, King was flanked by family and supporters who jubilantly escorted him to a waiting vehicle. King remains on a $1 million bail pending the Court of Appeal hearings in November. From the High Court of Justice, I am Jamie J. Roche reporting. ABS News. Meanwhile, the wheels were set in motion for the court proceedings hours earlier. Dr. Dorsett sprung into action upon learning his client had been taken into police custody. He was being held at police headquarters and ABS's Sharon Miller Taswell hurried there to investigate. We rushed to police headquarters and waited. Leroy King's attorney, David Dorsett, arrived moments later. What's he happening now? Is he being extradited? Well, it ought not to be, not according to the law. If there's any extradition under these circumstances, it is completely illegal and, and contrary to the rule of law. Judicial review proceedings are pending. The uh, appeals have not been exhausted. In fact, we have an additional 10 days to appeal. But in any event, we have appealed. He says once judicial proceedings are pending, no extradition can take place. Dr. Dorsett says he got a call this morning from a person close to Mr. King informing him of his arrest. When he spoke with the Attorney General, what was his response? Well, I'm not going to divulge that, but I was a little concerned. We have also filed and served on the office of the Commission of Police. Um, he was corpus proceedings uh, because there is no lawful reason for Mr. King to be detained as far as we are aware. He also filed a request for leave to appeal to the London-based JCPC. You've spoken with Leroy King. Yeah. What is his demeanor now? Well, he's calm as, uh, as, as, as best as can be. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a pleasant situation. I, I can't read inside his heart and mind. 
but I would imagine that he's deeply troubled as I, as I am. If Leroy King is extradited, what happens from there? It will be a very sad day in the history of a country where the rule of law has simply been uh, put under the bus and run over. And once he's in the hands of the U.S. government, are our hands totally tied? We are not a place that can go and bomb the United States. We, we are a country of laws, and we expect the local authorities and all other authorities to have respect for our laws. Hours after King's arrest, Attorney Dorsett got the call he was waiting for. 245. 245. Thank you. Court at 245. He rushed inside to tell his clients. My aim is to ensure that the rule of law um, is, is abided by. There is no lawful basis upon which he can be removed. For ABS News, I'm Sharon Miller Taswell. Again, we should reiterate here that Leroy King is free on bond. Now to another area of interest, another crucial step was taken toward having the Caribbean Court of Justice as the country's final court of appeal. Parliament's upper house, the Senate, approved the Constitution of Antigua and Barbuda Amendment Bill 2018. Amar says begins our recap with the case made by government lawmakers for the CCJ. Senator Shanella Gavaya described the referendum as a step toward full independence. She specifically urged the youth to vote during the historic November 6 referendum. I want to look in the past, but I want to look at the future, Madam President. I want to talk to the young people of this country today, Madam President. And I want them to understand what the CCJ means for us as young people. This referendum, Madam President, represents a real opportunity for young people of this country to have at least some input in the decision-making process of government, Madam President. Meanwhile, Deputy President of the Senate, Osbert Frederick, said time is of the essence in acceding to the CCJ. He challenged the opposition to come on board. We want the CCJ. We want it here and we want it now. Not come. Because you're hearing one thing here, that we support the CCJ. But then out there on the radio, you hear some executive, high-ranking members of the same United Progressive Party having absolutely nothing positive to say about the CCJ. Senator Philip Shaul highlighted other countries which have their own apex court and questioned why the same can't be the case for Antigua and Barbuda. Other than rumor and speculation, I have not heard anything and certainly no rational reason why this independent sovereign country can have, cannot have its apex court in the Caribbean. This constitutional amendment is a crucial step towards acceding to the CCJ's appellate jurisdiction. The referendum is the next step. Amar Sayers reporting for ABS News. Meanwhile, United Progressive Party Senator Jonathan Joseph says the, that he supports the CCJ and described it as a move away from colonialism. The whole question of us moving away from our colonial ties is one that I hold dearly. However, he said legitimate concerns exist despite his support for the Caribbean Court of Justice. One such issue is what he said is the lack of trust that some persons have in the court. He believes education is key to allying the fears in some circles about the potential for political interference in the court. The information to the questions that they have and the fear that they have are there to put the proper system and process in place to ensure, to ensure that the education on the matter of the CCJ is continued. Antigua and Barbuda has been named the Caribbean's most romantic destination for the fourth time in a row. The award was announced at the World Travel Awards Caribbean and North America in Montego Bay, Jamaica earlier this week. Tourism Minister, the Honorable Charles Fernandez, has called the achievement an endorsement of Antigua's romance product. 
Meanwhile, Antigua and Barbuda Tourism Authority Chief Executive Officer Colin C. James says the award is the result of strategic partnerships and marketing strategies. The hashtag Antigua Barbuda Romance campaign, which won the Silver Magellan Award this year, is being credited for boosting the destination's recognition. Travel professionals and consum consumers worldwide voted on the award which recognizes destinations which have performed well over the last 12 months. Antigua and Barbuda also recently won the Caribbean Honeymoon Destination of the Year by the Caribbean Wedding Industry Awards. And speaking of accomplishments, so the global profile of the University of the West Indies has received a major boost. It is now ranked among the top 5% of the world's best institutions. This news comes as the government of Antigua and Barbuda looks to establish the UE's fourth landed campus at Five Islands. It is the first time the university has made it into the prestigious Times Higher Education World University rankings for 2019. The UE has been ranked at 591 out of 1,258 universities which made the list. This puts the university in the top 5% based on data showing that they are over 25,000 recognized universities globally. It is the only institution from the Caribbean on this global list. Universities are ranked based on the learning environment, research international, Outlook, Citations, and Industry Outcome. Vice Chancellor Professor Sir Hilary Beckles says the global ranking highlights the intellectual achievement and scholastic contributions of the Caribbean community. $10 million spent so far, but still there's a fair way to go. We have an update this evening on the restoration of the iconic St. John's Anglican Cathedral and how you can help. Sherilyn Beza sat down with Project Manager Bruce Arendelle. The four phases include the interior, exterior, the perimeter wall, and the grounds. Project manager Bruce Arundel details the work to be done to complete the restoration. So far, we are yet to complete the interior, but we have reached a stage of completion where the congregation can worship and have been worshiping since Easter. Um, we're looking to complete the finishings of the interior. He adds that work will continue on the exterior, walls and grounds. Close to $10 million has been spent so far. The project manager says it is difficult to estimate the remaining cost as key decisions need to be made that can affect the amount of money needed. A major one I would say would be the restoration of the exterior of the cathedral. There are um, some key offers that we've had um, especially with regards to the churchyard walls and the walkways within the churchyard. I know we have had an offer um, from the prison, and um, if they make good on that offer, that will drop um, a considerable amount of money that we would need to raise to, to get those restored. Arundel says the pace of restoration is driven by fundraising. Arundel invites your contributions, noting that donations will go much further than providing a place of worship for the congregation. We hire local workmen. We purchase goods and services from local um, businesses. So when you make a contribution to the St. John's Cathedral, it stays in Antigua, it, it employs people, it pays taxes. And then when you look at what is left behind, um, this is a, an extremely important historical landmark in Antigua. The project manager says you can also make your contributions by patronizing the fundraising events. Built approximately 171 years ago, this magnificent structure plays a major role as an historic site and the nation's tourism product. I'm Sherilyn Beza reporting for ABS News. Also here for us, teams will take to communities nationwide to conduct a new labor force survey. It will be the first time since 2015 that it has been done and will collect crucial data on employment, unemployment and underemployment. With our update on this, here's Jessica Russell.
The labor force survey is being funded by the United Nations Development Program, the World Bank, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. Head of the Statistics Division, Stachel Edwards, explains what will be covered. We want to get our understanding of the age group, um, you know, how many males, how many females that are involved in the labor market, how many persons are unemployed, um, what sectors they're working in, is it the tourist industry, is it in the uh, public sector, um, if they're in manufacturing, in the construction, also what type of occupations. Um, so we want to get the wealth of information that can be used by different stakeholders. With. For the first time, data for the survey will be collected using tablets as opposed to pen and paper. A World Bank economist explains how this will boost efficiency. The World Bank has been in support of uh, all the OSS member states uh, to transition to um, copy survey solutions, which is a new technology of using tablet to collect all the data. Um, this is going to reduce the time of um, data processing saying and then the stat office will be able to produce all the required statistics such as unemployment rate or um, poverty rates in in no time the statistics will help various stakeholders make informed decisions and guide policy the statistics division is expected to start producing results from the survey by the end of the year the division's enumerators are currently being trained jessica russell abs news Thanks, Jessica. Now, the Health Ministry is intensifying efforts to ensure all food establishments adhere to international standards on food safety. We sought an update on the issue from the Portfolio Minister on the heels of, the, of at least one establishment being temporarily closed in recent weeks. Janelle Smith has the details in this report. It was less than two weeks ago that a Chinese restaurant found itself under the microscope after damaging images of its kitchen were released to the public via social media. The restaurant was closed down temporarily by the authorities to force the establishment to address the unsanitary conditions. Chief Health Inspector Sharon Martin at that time urged for stronger regulations to be introduced for restaurants who wish to start businesses in Antigua. Health Minister the Honorable Marlon Joseph is in agreement and has asked the workers at the Central Board of Health for recommendations for a program to be put in place. Uh, I was really surprised at the number of restaurants um, in St. John's alone. And um, what is required is for CBH, uh, the Ministry of Health, to establish a robust inspectorate. Uh, we must get out of the culture of reacting to these Incidents. Minister Joseph has suggested that in the interim, a reasonable schedule be put in place so that both the restaurants and health care operators can be inspected more often. I am suggesting to them that uh, in, t in terms of the fast food areas, they should be inspected every month. And so we have even gone ahead uh, through cabinet to secure some more um, uh, what you call appointments to bolster the, the surveillance team. And we're going to be hiring some more people uh, in order that we can have routine inspections. The health minister revealed that the chief health inspector has been asked to create a report with the appropriate recommendations. Once approved, it will be adopted. He noted that carrying out routine checks will be the new standard for the Central Board of Health. We should be routinely inspecting not only the, uh, the cook shops and restaurants and so forth, but we should be inspecting all government facilities, including the Mount St. John Hospital, including all these um, daycare centers, including the, um, the homes for the elderly that's operated privately, including fines, including Clearview, including the, um, the, the prison. This should have been this, the, uh, the practice all along. In addition to the hiring of other personnel, the ministry will also be ensuring that the persons are trained and equipped to make interventions where necessary if a breach is found. Janor Smith reporting for ABS News. But equally important, do you know what human trafficking is? What are the signs that someone may be a victim? Well, the Ministry of Public Safety and Labor held a street fair earlier today to educate about human trafficking. Leon Norville was there and tells us all about the ministry's efforts. With Antigua and the Barbuda being recently removed from the Tier 2 watch list and moved into Tier 2, 
in human trafficking prevention, the Ministry of Public Safety and Labor is ensuring that the general public in Antigua is fully aware of how to identify the signs of human trafficking. Here we are at the street fair, whereby we are sensitizing the, or resensitize the general public. It's not the first time we resensitize the general public about the issues of trafficking, some of the elements that they need to look for and the way they can go in order to receive help for persons who may find themselves in such a situation. The Secretariat collaborated with several other local agencies directly involved in human trafficking prevention, such as the Narcotics Unit in the Royal Police Force, Women Against Rape and the Family and the Social Services. The street fair forms part of the Secretariat's week of activities. It will conclude tomorrow morning with an awareness walk through the city under the theme Know the Facts, Human Trafficking is an Illegal Act. The walk begins from Lions Den at 7. For ABS News, I am Leon Norville reporting. Uh, we'll take on that note, we'll take our first commercial break here on this Friday night. For those of you viewing on Facebook Live, don't go far. Sports is next. Swimmer Samantha Roberts seeks to improve personal best time at the Youth Olympics. And coming up a little bit later, we'll have a look at regional and international developments. You're watching the ABS Evening News. Stay with us.